Hey guys, good morning. For today, I'll be the one to do the talking. And yes, this is still Toby and Ravels, and my name is Katkaya Kabu. So welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about linear programming. So what is linear programming? Linear programming is a quantitative technique that can be used to determine the optimal solution from a given set of parameters, such as constraints. To appreciate linear programming, we will start with the theory of constraints. So what is the theory of constraints? The theory of constraints is a method for identifying the limiting factor, the constraint, that prevents the firm from achieving its goal then improving that constraint until it is no longer the factor that prevents the achievement of the goal. In the short-term view, always remember that the goal is to increase profits. Thus, if we are faced with constraints such as lack of resources, we should prioritize its use in such a way that we will maximize its profits. Prioritize the use of constrained resources. If there is one constraint, we will prioritize the one with the highest margin per constraint. And if there is more than one constraint, we will use linear programming. To demonstrate, we will go to a sample case. Sample case. JZA Incorporated manufactures two goods, C and D. Both of these goods require two processes, pounding and steering. The contribution margin is 6 pesos for C and 8 pesos for D. The number of hours required to process the two products are as follows. For good C, pounding is 10. For good D, pounding is 20. For good C, Steering is 10. For a good D, steering is 10. The numbers of hours available during the period are 400 hours for pounding and 300 hours for steering. So what combination of C and D are we going to produce to maximize the profits? So we will start with the objective function. So this is the objective function, z equals 6c plus 8d. Considering each c earns 6 and each d earns 8. Now let's go to the constraints. For the first constraint, pounding. For the second constraint, steering. And for the last constraint, the non-negative constraint. It simply tells us that it is impossible to produce a negative number of units. Again, these three are the constraints. Next, we will graph their constraints. Please look at this. As we look at this graph, in the plane, C be the x-axis, D be the y-axis. The following is the pounding constraints. For pounding, let's cover the 10C. We will have 20D less than or equal to 400. And with that, we will have D is less than or equal to 20. And then next, what if we have no D? We will have 10C is less than or equal to 400. And that will be C is less than or equal to 40. That's for pounding. Next, for steering. If we cover 10C, we will have 10D is less than or equal to 300, which will give us 
D is less than or equal to 30. Then, if we cover the D, we will have 10C is less than or equal to 300, which will give us C is less than or equal to 30. That's for steering. Last but not the least is the non-negative constraint. As you can see, both C and D can never be negative. Next, let's go back to the PowerPoint. The area that is shaded within all constraints is the visible region. These are possible combinations of C and D. The extreme points in this region are 0, 0, 0, 20, 30, 0, and the intersection of pounding and steering, which is what we are going to find out. Let us use the elimination method to find the intersection. We have pen C plus 20D is less than or equal to 400. Then we have another pen C plus 10D is less than or equal to 300. As you can see, we can both eliminate the two 10 Cs. Next, 20 D and 10 D. What we will have is 10 D, 400 and 300. We will have 100. So we can see that 10 D is less than or equal to 100, which now gives us to D is less than or equal to 10. Next, we will use the second equation to find C. 10C plus 10D is less than or equal to 300. 10C plus 10, 10, as you can see over here, is less than or equal to 300. 10C is less than or equal to 200. And then here we have C is less than or equal to 20. So as you can see in this PowerPoint, we have 20 C's and 10 D's. As you can see from the PowerPoint presentation, here are the possible combinations in the extreme points excluding 0C and 0D. We have 30C with no Ds, no Cs with 20Ds, 20Cs with 10Ds. Let's look for the combination that gives the highest margin in total. Now, let's look for the combination that gives the highest margin in total. As you can see, the objective function of z is equal to 6c plus 8d. 30, 0. z is equal to 6, 30 plus 8, 0. We just substituted this to here, and the answer will be 180. Next, we will try 0 and 20. 0 and 20. Z is equal to 6 times 0 plus 8 times 20. It will give us 160. And last but not the least, we will try 20 and 10. Z is equal to 6 times 20 plus 8 times 10, which will give us 120 plus 80 with a total of 200. And as you can see, 200 is the highest of them all. 
So the optimal combination, as you can see from here, is the 20 C's and 10 D's. This will give us the highest possible profit. And that's it for linear programming. And thank you so much for having me today. And by the way, please don't forget to also subscribe to my channel, Kat Nicole C. Bye! Okay, ito na talaga, guys. Thank you for watching. Comment for the future topics that you would like to request. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and hit the subscribe and notification bell to be updated for future videos.